Okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our 20-minute session uh, on monitoring OpenStack with uh, Dynatrace. Let me quickly start uh, with explaining what uh, Dynatrace does in a, in, a, in a general sense. And you, you will see um, in the next uh, few minutes that Dynatrace is a, a monitoring solution that has a lot of breadth uh, as well as a lot of depth uh, whenever that is, that is necessary. So we, we speak about Dynatrace being a full stack monitoring solution. If you look into the APM space, you will find many providers that claim that they have full stack solutions. So it makes sense to explain a little bit more uh, in, in detail what Dynatrace means when we speak about full stack. In, in Dynatrace, full stack means that you get, uh, when you deploy Dynatrace visibility, into all the areas that are mentioned here on, on the left side. So you get visibility into uh, real user behavior, whether people are using web applications to, to access uh, your offerings, or whether they use native mobile applications on Android or iOS. You get uh, visibility into all the backend services uh, that you run to, to deliver your services to your customers, uh, whether including code level visibility into technologies like Java, .NET, Node.js, PHP, just to mention a few of them. And of course, Dynatrace also provides visibility into the most important infrastructure components that are necessary to run your applications, which is including the most frequently used operating systems like Linux, Windows, Solaris, AIX, but also container technologies such as uh, Docker, and uh, of course also virtualization technologies. And of, we will dig deeper into the specifics of uh, the OpenStack support that Dynatrace provides. So all of these components are monitored with Dynatrace, which is already a lot. But when we um, are explaining why Dynatrace is different than other APM solutions, we actually do not stick to this uh, point uh, on, on, on the slides. So the, the, the question of what data is collected by Dynatrace is not the most important thing to understand uh, when it comes to Dynatrace. The crucial part is actually that Dynatrace does more. We are not only monitoring all these things, we also monitor the dependencies between all those components in real time. So that means if you are spinning up a new Docker container with running, let's say, a Java application server inside, Dynatrace automatically detects that container. It automatically detects all the Java components running inside and instruments them but it also detects all the dependencies of this application. So all the other services, let's say you have a microservice architecture that are invoked by that service are detected by Dynatrace and Dynatrace builds this connected end-to-end -end model which is called Smartscape. If um, I have no time in the, in the demo today to show you Smartscape, you are invited to join us at our booth right behind you um, and, and we, can, we can walk you through that uh, visual. Um, all these data points, so both the monitoring data that is retrieved by our one agent and also the dependency data that we visualize in Smartscape is then fed into the Dynatrace AI engine. What is this good for? Most of the monitoring approaches that are used today, whether it's um, commercial software or open source software, have one problem. They are collecting a lot of data. So what our, talking to our customers, we usually find that they are not lacking data. In fact, everybody has plenty of data. The much more difficult thing is to get to find answers. If you have a problem in your production environment, you don't need only monitoring data. You need to find the root cause. And this is where our AI layer helps you by pointing to the component that is really the root cause, whether it's an infrastructure component that is creating the problem or if it's an, an application component, a certain service uh, that, that has a problem, Dynatrace is pointing to, that, um, to the root cause of the problem. And this is where our AI engine is really uh, kicking in. When uh, it is about the vision of, 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 of Dynatrace, we are building a product that is built to be automated. 
So we understand that in, in a modern environment, people do not have the time to work on configuring an APM solution to keep that uh, configuration up to date. People need an APM solution that is part of the fabric that you can integrate into your data center operating systems that you can fully autom automate. And that is how we have built our product. And uh, again, the AI engine is key in order to achieve such a level of automation where you do not have uh, to spend a lot of time and, and, and resources that you uh, likely do not have to monitor your uh, environment. Before we move over to the demo of, 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 of the product, let me show you this slide that explains in, in a little bit more detail and is maybe a little bit more tangible um, when it is about OpenStack specifics. And I assume being on, a, on an OpenStack conference here that, that everybody is interested into the specifics of, of uh, Dynatrace OpenStack support. So first of all, Dynatrace is certified uh, as an APM solution to be compatible with OpenStack that I think is, is, is important if you make an investment here. And we are partnering especially with these three providers here at, uh, at, at, at the bottom. If you think about how to consume uh, Dynatrace APM as a solution, you have two options that are uh, on this slide here. First of all, there is the Dynatrace SaaS solution. If you think about trying out Dynatrace, Dynatrace SaaS is the easiest way to get started. If you go to our homepage, dynatrace.com, you can get uh, a, a Dynatrace SaaS trial started in 30 seconds. Uh, you, you can download the agent, connect it to Dynatrace, and you will see the first data points. Um, if due to le legal um, constraints, SaaS is not an option for you, we also have an on-prem delivery model, which is called Dynatrace Managed, and there would be more to tell um, about um, how, how cool the Dynatrace on-prem delivery model is if you want to go on-prem. Either way, when uh, monitoring OpenStack, you need a, a proxy type of component, which is called Dynatrace Security Gateway, and that you install in your data center or into the data centers that you want to monitor with Dynatrace, because uh, Dynatrace is, of course, a multi-cloud, multi-data center uh, ready solution that scales up to 10,000s of hosts that you can monitor with Dynatrace, either in a single data center or in multi-data centers. This proxy connects then um, to a couple of, um, actually to the Neutron API, directly to collect some monitoring uh, data by that API from, uh, from, from OpenStack. Uh, all the other data points on OpenStack are collected with the Dynatrace agent. That is a single component, very easy to download. You run the installer on all the machines that you want to monitor, and then Dynatrace starts collecting monitoring data fully automatically. With OpenStack, there is one specific situation. In general, you would put Dynatrace on all the operating systems, many times guest uh, op operating systems, that run the applications that, that you are using to provide uh, data to your, to, your, to your customers. This is, uh, of course, still true in OpenStack, but on OpenStack, you should put the one agents not only uh, on the compute uh, nodes and, and on the guests running on the compute nodes, you can also and should also put the Dynatrace agent on the controller nodes. So this is the, the green box over here. And these are the, 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 the agents, so that is the, the Dynatrace agent symbol. And you see that if you deploy the agents to the controller nodes and the compute nodes, you get visibility into uh, all the important OpenStack services that Dynatrace detects on the compute nodes and automatically monitors for performance and availability. But you also get visibility into health of the compute nodes. And with the agents sitting here in the VMs, you monitor the applications that are running in your OpenStack cloud. So that is really full stack monitoring in the sense of Dynatrace. You're monitoring the applications, and, but you're also monitoring the whole, the whole private cloud ecosystem. That is uh, how Dynatrace is deployed. Now I think it's, it's a good time to switch over and, and see uh, how, how Dynatrace works in, in, in reality and uh, to also give you an example of, of, what, you, of what you get with, um, with Dynatrace. Uh -huh. So 
So this is the Dynatrace UI, and I want to start with the OpenStack-specific view. So that is the view that is presenting um, a very small OpenStack environment here that, that we have running in a, in a, in a demo environment um, here on the, on the Dynatrace side. So what you see is that we have deployed Dynatrace here to four nodes only. So one uh, controller, three compute nodes, very, very small um, in, in environment. Uh, you see that Dynatrace is showing you uh, usage uh, trends about the number of virtual machines running. Of course, that would be much more interesting uh, in, in a real-world environment that is much larger uh, than, than, than our environment here. Let's look into, into the services that are monitored. And the important thing to say it again here, um, in order to monitor all the services here, you have to do nothing more then deploying the Dynatrace agent on the controller nodes. So all the services are then detected and monitored automatically, no further configuration necessary. Um, we, we see that this is really a small deployment, so only, uh, only one process. And let's, let's look at the keynote, Keystone, sorry, Keystone service here, which is a very crucial one. Um, you see that all the Keystone processes are discovered automatically. Uh, Dynatrace also provides network level visibility um, and Dynatrace has a very nice and, and pretty unique um, feature that it can discover all the log files automatically. And that is not specific to OpenStack processes, it's also not specific uh, to technologies where we can provide code level visibility such as Java or .NET. We can do that for every process that is running on a machine. So we see process hails from a network perspective and we detect log files of, uh, of, of, of a process and you can uh, go into a log file here directly um, and, and, and access the data. It, per default the data is not uploaded to the Dynatrace cluster, it is remaining on the machine. So by, by clicking on that, on, that, on that button here, uh, the Dynatrace agent would fetch the data from the machine and analyze it then here in the, in the UI. There is an, an alternative uh, uh, option available for log analysis, which is transferring the data to the Dynatrace cluster and um, maintaining the data then uh, on, on Dynatrace as well. That was a bad time frame without data in the, in the log file. Um, what I want to do here as um, the, the final uh, step in the presentation is to show you um, how the Dynatrace AI layer is working and what value that, uh, that presents to you. So different to other APM solutions, Dynatrace is not presenting a huge number of incidents to you. It's not uh, swamping you with, with, with incidents. Dynatrace is presenting problems to you. And let me show you what, how such a problem looks like. And I want to, uh, for, for an obvious reason, pick a problem here that uh, occurred uh, in uh, on one of this, uh, in, in this OpenStack environment um, yesterday afternoon. So the fact that all the things are green here means that the problem is over. over. During the problem, oh, everything green here would be red, indicating that the problem is, is, is still going on. So the biggest difference between classical APM solutions and Dynatrace is actually the problem itself. With other APM solutions, you would get at least seven incidents here. Right? If you read uh, the summary on top, that this was a, a, a fairly complex situation. So one web application was affected by the problem, five services uh, were affected, and one infrastructure component. Dynatrace did not send seven or more incidents. It sent only one notification to the operations team, which looks exactly like the screen that we have here today which is already summarizing the situation. So Dynatrace has correlated all these incidents and analyzed the incidents and pre is presenting you really an answer. It's not giving you a challenge to figure out how all these incidents are related. You do not have to call for a war room, bring in everybody that could know something about the situation to figure out how things are related with each other. It is in the product. So let's see how Dynatrace presents that situation. The first thing is a business impact analysis. That, I think, is the most important thing to have if you are working on a problem. What is the impact of this problem? Is this super urgent or can I look at it tomorrow? So if you know that this problem is affecting 200 individual users, and these are not clicks, these are really unique users, then you can tell, well, is this super high in priority 
or is it something that, that can wait? Might depend on, on your business whether 200 users are, are many or, or not. I think it's too many um, to, to, to ignore the situation. Then uh, you see that Dynatrace is also automatically analyzing the effect of the situation on, from, from a real user perspective. So you see here that we automatically detected that the response time degraded pretty, pretty much, so from an average of about four seconds to, uh, to about half a minute. And all of that, to say it again, without configuration. So all this is auto-discovered, automatic baselines uh, without any thresholds that you have to set. You can define your own thresholds if you want to do so, but you don't need to do anything like, uh, like this with, with Dynatrace. So now we know uh, that it, the problem was affecting 200 users and they had a really, really bad uh, response time on this uh, OpenStack easytravel.com uh, web application. And we also know that this problem is not specific to a certain region of the world. So le let's assume that problem would be uh, only in visible to European customers, it would tell you that it's, that it's Europe. If it would be China, it would tell you that it's China. If, it's, if you have a lot of um, customers coming from China, Dynatrace will automatically refine to smaller regions in China down to city level. So that is a global problem. What is the root cause? That is, I think, the most important thing to know. Quite a few components were affected. And Dynatrace is pointing to the root cause here directly. It is showing that the, the problem is coming from a backend service called check destination and from CPU saturation on, uh, on this particular um, machine that is running in, in, in OpenStack. So Dynatrace is not pointing to a single root cause here, which is maybe interesting. Dynatrace is saying that situation was created by resource contention on a machine and by a certain software component. So please remember the name of the machine here. We could go into the machine, but we do not have enough time here. We would see that the CPU is, uh, is really stalling here at, at 100%. But it is the, the OpenStack business backend. Let's drill into the, into the software component here. And what, uh, what we see is that the response time of this um, component is, is, is really degrading during the, the problem, and that was picked up by Dynatrace automatically. We would see that if we would check the, ma the machines where this ma uh, service is running on, we would see that it is exactly that OpenStack machine that is reporting CPU saturation. So that degradation of that service actually leads to resource contention on the, on the machine. What we want to know now is, well, that looks like a problem of that application. That it, it seems that this application is consuming a lot of CPU. So that is where the responsibility of the operator would usually stop. That looks like an engineering problem. It's, something has to be fixed with the, with the application. Let's see how that works with Dynatrace. We can analyze that degradation here. And by just clicking the, the, the button, I get, again, a fully automated analysis that is showing me what changed here. And if you, if you read the numbers, you see that there is a huge increase in response time of this service during that uh, period of time where the problem occurred. And uh, Dynatrace is pointing to code execution as, as the hotspot. So that is uh, not yet enough to fix the situation. So we see here that it's not, this is a Java application. It's not a GC activity, it's not suspension. It's really code execution. And I can look at it really, now, now we are going deep into the code level. And it's maybe hard to read. Let's see if I find that again. When I checked earlier, it was actually funny. Yeah. So for all the, the engineers in the, in, the, in the group, what you see here is, of course, not what would happen in, 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 in reality. This is a demo environment, but we actually found how, how our demo environment is working. So to produce this situation here, we have deployed a new version of this application, which has a busy weight uh, loop here. So a busy weight is a, a, a weight that is spinning uh, CPU cycles. So with that code deployment, which is, of course, a very dumb thing to do uh, in, in, in practice, we are consuming the CPU, uh, which is then leading to CPU contention uh, on, that, uh, on that machine. 
um, yeah, and Dynatrace finds that automatically in, in a very easy way. We are out of time, so I would invite everybody to, to our booth. Maybe not uh, ev everybody this, this minute, but we are here the next two days. So welcome to join us, and we are uh, happy to answer your questions then directly. Thanks. <laughs>